let's let's continue a few things that we've discussed over the past couple of weeks that I want to touch on. And as always, I like to uh, get the questions from the audience that we didn't get to answer, you know, in the last couple of weeks, because our conversation just goes so great. But I always want to give props to everybody out there who comments in the chat and we will get to your questions. Um, let's start with this one. Uh, you mentioned Reggie White was one of your security at a certain point. Uh, yeah. Talk to us about yeah. Reggie White. Senior. Oh, okay, senior. So this is not the one that we see on YouTube and all that. This is not junior. This is senior. Okay. No, he, 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 was, he was still working for Compton. His dad was uh, in charge of the gang, gang uh, unit in Compton, and I was doing dudos. He, his dad, my cousin, Philip Bailey, Yuri Taylor, and a few other folks, they would rotate uh, as doing security at dudos. Okay. So yeah. Reggie White Sr. Was a, was a police officer also? Reggie Wright Sr. was, he was the first one, and the junior came in right behind him. He the one, he, junior was the one that went to work to death row. Oh, okay. Yep, yep, that's the one we know. Okay, okay. You know what, talk, talk to us about the Compton Police Department, because when I was a kid, when I was, you know, spending the night at my friend's house on Castlegate, it was, it was the Compton Police, and then just one day it became the sheriff. Do you know why the change was? <laughs> you know, um, at that time, I had a television show in Compton called Issues in the Hood. That was a big controversy. In fact, um, I'm launching a, a Roku channel featuring a lot of those videos, okay? And one of those, one of the videos that we had, one, one of the subjects of the video was should Compton bring the sheriff to Compton, Compton, uh, to Compton? Hmm. And we all, as folks who live around Compton have experienced uh, various issues with the sheriff for decades. Firestone was the first one. Firestone Sheriff back in the 60s and 70s was uh, okay. known. Southgate area, right? Yes. Uh, they was known for uh, putting the foot in the brother's ass. Uh, a little later on, we had Carson. Carson had the issues. I had issues with Carson, but for the most part, they weren't as bad. They had a black captain for a while. And they, st they still had your assholes, okay? Uh, now I deal with Alameda. I mean, now we deal with Alameda, where, where, where the club your club is. We have an Alameda station and a station on the corner of uh, Imperial and Normandy. And I never really liked the sheriff because they just did a lot of dumb shit, unnecessary shit, because they could. Okay. When they had more brothers coming to the coming to the sheriff. You start getting a little less tension. Okay. Uh, Compton PD was uh, had a lot of black folks in it, and they were very uh, popular during the nineties. And allegedly, allegedly, uh, some of the cops were too tight for some of the some of the gangbangers and dope dealers. Allegedly, mm -hmm. and yeah. some things were mm -hmm. way out of pocket. And I think the biggest thing that happened out of Compton that uh, caused them to go from the Compton PD to the sheriff is that uh, a, a, Long Beach, a Long Beach cop was shot with a gun that was confiscated and was supposed to be in custody in Compton uh, property room. Whoa. And that gun shot a cop mm. in Long Beach, and nobody wanted to know how the hell the gun got from, from Compton to the hands, shoot a cop in Long Beach. And I think that was a straw that broke the camel's back. And that's when uh, current mayor at the time, Omar Bradley, and some other folks passed a resolution, get rid of the Compton PD and bring in the sheriff. And for, at that time, it was, a lot, it was supposed to be economically more feasible. Just in the fact of the, uh, the city liability, because you know you have to have a certain amount of insurance and that, that, that could, the premium on that, could be huge. Um, and with, with the county, you just pay them a flat fee. You know, I don't know, five million a month, five, whatever it is, a mm. year, whatever the case may be. And you got service. Plus you had all the other resources they have, the helicopters and the dogs, whatever else you need. And economically, economically at that time, it was one, it was a pretty smooth move. And um, it gave me a chance to meet some of the guys who were, uh, Running for running for office. When I had this TV show, at this time because it was a live, just like it was just like this show right here. It was live. But it was a live call-in show, mm -hmm. and uh, I met a lot of the captains 
that ran the Compton Sheriff's Department. And I got a better understanding, I did personally, a uh, better understanding of how cop minds work. So mm. shortly after that, I didn't have any problem. In fact, I became friends with a couple of cops. I got some family members in the sheriff's department, okay? Mm -hmm. And they have mixed opinions, mm -hmm. not from the sheriff's department as a whole, but as they have mixed opinions about individual cops. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of cops who are, um, who are bullies, and they're mm -hmm. gonna be bullies whether they was cops, whether they were selling donuts, they're gonna be bullies slinging donuts, okay? Yeah. And they got assholes, they're gonna be assholes whether they was a preacher or a policeman, they're gonna be assholes. And they talk about sometimes they need to have more education to be required to be a cop and a sheriff. That's something that's, that's been on the, uh, on the, uh, oh, yeah. talked about for a while. Facts. They, yeah. Huh? There, there is a problem, Alonzo, if it take, if I have to go to school longer to become a hairdresser than right. I do a police officer, there's a problem. Right, right, right. All right. I can do, I can do a Jerry curl. Uh, take me long to do a jerry curl. Just carry a pistol. <laughs> <laughs> I can do a present curl. I, I can get a pistol in the bag before I can give a, give somebody a present curl. That's some bullshit. Okay? Mm -hmm. And here, here's something that's crazy, man. My circle of friends and associates is pretty big. Okay, um, I went to a meeting last week, and it was for a young a gentleman who's running for sheriff. His name is uh, Matthew, Matthew Gonzalez, I think it is. Uh, Matthew something or another. Uh, well, I said, I said at a table and talked to this dude, man. We, it was about 15 of us at this table. And um, my friend of mine who was working on his campaign invited me to talk to him. They know I have a little influence in the streets. And I talked to him and we talked to him. Everybody talked to him about different things that concerned them and how the sheriff should be run. After I left that meeting, I have another friend who is high ranking at the uh, airport who used to be a sheriff. I called him up to get a background. I get, hey man, this guy right here. What you think about him? He's a nice guy, but I'm running for sheriff too. So here's something that we I think we 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 don't we don't really get into the politics of the policing until it's too late. We kind of, yes. we kind of don't pay shit attention, but mm -hmm. I, I'm paying attention. I'm paying attention, mm -hmm. okay? Because if you pay attention now, you can hopefully avoid some shit or have some input, uh, some, not really say so, but some input yep. on future policy. And that's the part we got to stop. We got to stop ignoring that shit. The, your mm -hmm. community politics, your policing politics, you got to get involved some way from a fashion, put on a regular shirt and a regular pair of jeans and talk like you're a regular person and not like a game banger or ex game banger waiting to go to gym or just got out of the gym. Because mm -hmm. what I realize is they everybody has their perceptions of people. They say, don't judge a book by the cover. That's too late. They do it all the time. They mm -hmm. do it all the time. But present yourself in, in, in a manner and learn to communicate, not talk white, just communicate in a manner that will allow you to be heard and be respected verbally so that people will take you serious. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things we have to do. Uh, a regular politics, when you go to a city council meeting, uh, speak ah, up yes. speak clearly uh, and talk to your politicians. They run, they run the city that you live in. Mm -hmm. You ain't to be afraid of them. Same thing with the police. If you talk to them, don't wait till something happen. To be when you pissed off to want to get some justice, be there when this policy is being made because they got mm -hmm. all kinds of citizen, citizen committees and shit jumping off. So, mm -hmm. if you can be a, a part of a campaign and get to know the chief of police, the chief, chief of the sheriff's department, he got the biggest police department in the country. LA County Sheriff is the biggest police department mm -hmm. in the country. The budget is like two billion dollars. Okay. LA, LA, LA County Sheriff go from Pomona to Lancaster. Mm -hmm. That's about a hundred miles. Is it like a hundred miles? That's a lot of coverage. It's, that's like 120 miles of, shit of policing because it's 50 miles from my house to Pomona. It's 70 mm -hmm. miles from my house to, to Lancaster. And that's mm -hmm. all sheriff. 
So that means no matter what city you in, the sheriff could follow your ass right up in there. They got jurisdiction over everybody. So you, this, this is some shit you have to be involved. You have to know about. So mm-hmm. I, um, I got a, a call that I got an email last night from my partner that's running for for, uh, for sheriff. For the first time in my life, I dropped some money on on a, on a campaign. For the first time in my life, I dropped some money on a campaign. All right. Now, his job is going to be tough. He, it's going to be some shit happening in the future that he, mm-hmm. gonna, he might do that I might not like, but I know him well enough to say, you know what, hey, man, tell me about it. He's going to be on my show at some point in time. I already got this set up. Good. Right. He was on my show uh, at least 12 times, my other show, when he was in Compton. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring him on this show and let some uh, so let my audience talk to him. And hopefully they can do in the chat room. Maybe we'll do a three-way thing like we did before. Mm. And let them, you know, talk to the people, man, before they get in office. Because you got to vote these that. people in, man. Mm-hmm. I love that idea. That's a great idea. Talk to these people before they get in office, man. Uh, this one dude was talking about uh, he's for marijuana. He's for cannabis. Mm-hmm. He's for cannabis. Okay? He's for cannabis, which means that uh, if he's for cannabis and if he became the sheriff, that nine times out of ten, cannabis facilities will stop getting raises as much. Because mm-hmm. we all know that's a hustle for the police department. Because they, they can't do that. You got a bunch, you got a bunch of money and folks are going in and getting it and leaving you with the dope and busting you and mm-hmm. come back two weeks later to bust you again. Yeah. You can't put the money in the bank. Mm-hmm. The money can't go in the bank. That's why dope, that's why the spencery is always getting robbed. Oh yeah. So, you know, it's 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 a lot of things, it's a lot of moving parts in this shit, man. So we have to be more um more vigil in our community and man, and, and until we can get brothers to realize that um everybody got a job and the more dumb shit we do in the hood, the more money they make off us doing dumb shit, we ain't gonna never have that. That's mm-hmm. a but I'm, I'm hearing more and more youngsters saying that they're starting to get it. A lot of youngsters are starting to get it. Okay, See, I really? Can you, I can tell you, because but, but you ain't going to pay me no attention, because another youngster tell you, then you you might uh, you might understand. That's why I said, when I talk to you, you I'm, I'm 64, you 40-something, you talking to the 30s, 30s talking to the 20s, 20s talking to the mm-hmm. teens, and hopefully at some point in time, that philosophy will, will come around and people will learn, hey man, you know what? Let that go. Yes. Put the gun down. Go, man, t- go y'all go in the alley like we used to do. Go in the mm-hmm. alley, you don't come out. It is what it is. You just explain my utopia, man. If, if if we can live in a world like that where we squabbed instead of shot our problems out, like the old days, man, we we well, you, you gotta understand, uh, man, as as men, <laughs> and this is the part that women don't get when it comes to men. As men, we have a uh, a testosterone thing. At some point in time, uh, somebody gonna test your t- test your testosterone. Whether it be your son, it could be your son, it could be your nephew, it could be the homie. And if like you a man, like I'm, you the man of your house, I'm the man of my house. Like mm-hmm. I tell them in my house, I, when it comes to my house, I'm motherfucking Hitler. Mm-hmm. If, if exactly. it don't go my way, you got to go. Mm-hmm. At my yep. house, I'm motherfucking Hitler. Okay, I should cut my mus- little bitty mustache because if, if I say it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. If I say it ain't gonna happen, it better not happen. And that's that. That's just how I go. Now, if your son or somebody feel that they got more power in your house than you do, they may have to go get their own piece of property. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. something that a lot of sometimes men have to go through in order to. Um, oh yeah, let their nuts fall. As they call, uh, let their nuts hang. Yep. And, and do unfortunately, it, yeah. do it faster than women do it faster than their daughters, and they do it to their sons. Oh yeah, that's crazy, right? Women I've do noticed it that. Their daughters and they do it. To their mamas, and mamas get into it. They maybe go move out, go get a new do an apartment, and be done. They'll get cool again later on. But mm-hmm. a mama let a son stay in the house for God knows how long. That's so true. 